There's been quite some time since my last video, and I wanted to put something out to let you all know that I'm still here and I'm still creating. I took a job as a goldsmith for a family-owned jewelry company, and I've been loving every minute of it. It has made it difficult to find the time to continue making wire wrap videos, but today I wanted to break my streak and post something. With this project, I'm going to take one of my Patreon exclusive videos and break it down into segments for you all here. If you like this video and you'd like to see more similar to this project, I do have access to my live stream classes hosted on Patreon every Monday at 9 a.m. Central Time and edited start to finish monthly tutorials exactly like this, depending upon the tier you sign up for. The link for my Patreon is in the description of this video. I hope this helps inspire some creativity in your day. I can't wait to hear what you think, so without further ado, let's dive in. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the start to finish process that I used for creating this tourmaline and amethyst pendant. The stone that I've selected for this project is a 17 by 7 millimeter tourmaline. For our first wire, I've cut 8 inches of 14 gauge half round. I'm going to start an inch and a half from one end to bend the bottom half of my frame into place. The teardrop shape that I've created for our frame is one inch long and three quarters of an inch wide. With the short end of our frame, I'm going to go ahead and secure it directly to our wire. With our longer end, I've bent it up towards the top so I can bring it over to begin creating the shape for our bale. The, the back and the front of this wire run parallel to each other. I'm going to wrap it through the frame just below where it is secured into place. With the rest of my wire here, I'm going to flatten it at the junction where it's wrapped around the frame and bring it straight across the back of our piece. From here, I'm going to bring it forwards onto the front to create a small channel between the two sections of 14 gauge. With the remaining length of my 14 gauge here, I'm gonna create a full spiral and secure it directly to the frame. I'm going to use my parallel pliers to form this spiral with the round side of our wire always facing towards the front of the piece.
I've passed my shorter end through towards the back of the frame. And we can bend it straight out to the side to secure this wire to the frame itself. With the outline of our frame complete, we're going to set this element to the side to begin creating our first settings. For our next element, I've cut two 6-inch segments of 18-gauge half round, two 6-inch segments of 16-gauge half round, and five feet of 28-gauge round. For this setting, we'll be using these 4mm faceted round amethysts. I'm going to start with one of our 16 gauges and our 28 gauge round. I've coiled 15 times around the 16 gauge with a little less than an inch at the end to secure it to our frame. Next, we're going to take both of our 18 gauges and place them on top of each other to the right of our 16 gauge. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room on these 18 gauges than I have on the 16 gauge. Last, we'll align our other 16 equal to the length of the 18 gauges here before weaving them together. For this pattern, we're gonna go over the top of our leftmost 16 gauge, underneath both of our 18 gauges, but up in between our 16 gauge and the 18 gauges. Coil once around. And then cross back between the 18 and our rightmost 16 over the top of both 18. And then coil once to our starting position. I'm going to repeat that same pattern twice more before we're beginning to create our first setting. Going underneath both 18 gauges as we cross over to the right, coiling once around the right, crossing between the right and the 18 gauges, and then coiling on our left side to complete the pattern. Going through for our last time, we go down between the 18 gauges and the 16, coil once around our rightmost 16, and then cross back through, going over the top of the 18 and back to our starting position. To begin creating the setting for our first stone, we're going to take both 18 gauges and bend them straight off the surface of our weave. From here, we're going to coil four times around our leftmost 16. With our four coils in place, we're going to cross underneath the 16 on the right to begin creating a figure eight between these two. We're gonna coil four times around our rightmost before crossing back to our starting position. We 
with our four coils in place. We're going to cross underneath the 16 on the left and coil four more times. With those four coils in place, we're going to continue our pattern until we have enough space for our four millimeter stone to sit comfortably on top of. I've done three repetitions through my pattern, and if we place one of our stones on top of that weave, we should have just enough space where there's a little bit of woven wire peeking out from the outside edge. Before we place the stone into the setting, we're going to return our two 18 gauges back into our weave. Our first step will be to flatten both 18 gauges back parallel to the surface of our weave. I'm going to bend one 45 degrees out to one side and the other 45 to the other. My 18 gauge going out towards the left sits on top of my 18 gauge going towards the right. I want these to cross over each other each time they pass through and set a stone. So we're going to start with the left and bring it across so that it sits parallel to our rightmost with the center just between our two 16 gauges. Then we can cross over with the right, going on top of the leftmost wire, so that the cross between them is right in between our 16s, and we can use our 28 to secure it down to the weave. For this pattern, we're going to use the exact same process we used before, crossing between the 16 and both 18 gauges, coming across to our rightmost 16, coiling once around, and then coming over the top of both 18 gauges to pull them down onto the weave, and coiling once at our starting position on the left. Next, we can bring these both parallel to each other again and pull them down through the bottom of the weave. This will help to create some space that we can slide a tool into to create the space for the stone to sit. From here we're going to take our stone, slide it into that setting pocket with the pointy side, the culet, of the stone facing down into our weave. I'm going to use my thumb and gently press our 18 gauges down onto the surface of our stone. To tighten them into place, we're going to bring both wires back to the surface of the weave and pull them out to either side. Once our stone is securely set, we can bend these back off the surface and create the settings for our next stones. The weaving process for our next stones will be exactly the same as the first stone. I'm going to go ahead and set our next stones before we move forward together. I went ahead and set our next two stones in the pattern. From here, we're going to bring both 18 gauges back to parallel to each other and repeat our three-part weave pattern five times, going underneath both 18 gauges, over the top of the opposite 16, 
coiling once around before crossing back to our starting position, going over the top of the 18 gauges and under our leftmost 16. I can count the total number of parallel 28 gauge round lines going over the top of the 18 gauge as a rotation through the pattern. Once I have five, I'm going to cross my 28 or back through the pattern and end on my right side 16 gauge. I'm going to coil 20 times around just this 16 gauge. That'll conclude this section of our video. Stay tuned for the next part coming soon. A special thank you goes out to all the names on your screen for supporting this channel through Patreon. What I'm doing would not be possible without your support. If you're interested in helping support the channel, follow the link in the description below this video. If you found this video helpful, leave me a like on the video. It helps me a lot with the visibility of my videos in YouTube's algorithms. To be the first to know when I upload new content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are available. Thank you for watching and happy wrapping.